I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. From the top to the bottom, I was raised to be solid. Real at every angle, I ain't worried about the oddity. Never see the hate, tunnel vision on the profit. Boss moves if I want it, best believe I cops it. Team so tough, moving silence like the mafia. Trying to get the form whip, probably name it Claudia. Wife rocking Tiffany, that's just another day to me. I be living lavish, that's why these haters be hating me. Stronger than I ever been, never break, never bend. God first, family second, money is like next to kin. So if you coming for me, pull the trigger, guard and shoot. Kevlar mindset, lifestyle bulletproof. Bulletproof, built tougher than your average, ultimate hustler, I'm the total package, bulletproof, I know you see me in your scope, I'm the captain of the ship, you just a sailor with a boat, bulletproof, built tougher than your average, ultimate hustler, I'm the total package, bulletproof, I know you see me in your scope, I'm the captain of the ship, you just a sailor with a boat, bulletproof. Yeah, bulletproof mafia, what's up? Okay, so, today's episode, how long does it take? To make your bed. So one of the things that you begin to think about whenever you add and add and add to your plate. You know, yesterday I talked about mental fortitude. I talked about getting your mind right. I talked about like getting everything kind of teed up and prepared so that you could you could like live a life where your heart kept a baseline. You, you didn't get emotionally jacked out. You know, when something bad happens, you didn't get you, you don't flip out. You don't lose your shit like you just you're just you're cool. And so one of the, the, one of the things that makes it feel like you're getting attacked from all sorts of different directions is as you scale and grow, you add more and more to your plate, like the more and more to your plate, like lots of stuff. But here's, what's crazy in today's society, everybody lives an overcommitted life. Like nearly every person who has any level of productivity or they have multiple kids who are under 13 years old, under 15 years old, who are active in any kind of sports whatsoever, you're a busy, busy person. You've got this going on and that going on and you're heading this way and you're heading that way. Inevitably, you don't get all of your commitments fulfilled on. You don't get everything taken care of. You, you wish that from the time you got up to the time you lay down, you could be as, a, as effective and efficient as possible. And for some of you, I'm one of these people, whenever I start to wig out, what I realize is, is that I've got too much going on. And probably that's the spirit inside of me saying, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. You've got some things that you've got to take care of that you've pushed off too long. Like, I need you to get centered and focused on this thing. Can you do that? And so then what I do is I drop into list making mode. Like I start building lists. Okay, I got to get this done. I got to get that done. I got to get this done. I got to get that done. I got to get this done. And then I go through all of those things. This is a super quick hack I'm going to give you. And, and I put the three D's next to them. Do, delegate, delete, right? So I've got this list of things that I want to get done. I either... I'm going to do that. I'm going to delegate it to somebody else and then I'll follow up that it got done or I'm going to delete it. It's not that important and stressing me out, but I actually just don't give a shit about it. Do delegate, delete, do delegate, delete. Remember that that's a nugget. All right. But what I was saying, we all live in this space of too much going on. So what does that mean for you? What that means for you is that you have to become a ninja at planning your day. And so one of the things that I teach anybody that I coach, anybody that I work with, anybody that'll listen actually, is that before I go to sleep, I have this thing that I do. I pat myself on the back for the wins of that day. And I think about as I'm falling to sleep, what I need to do the next day. And if something comes across my like, Ooh, I cannot forget that. I'll grab my phone. I'll drop it in the notes. I'll set a reminder. I'll, I'll hit the button and tell Siri, remind me tomorrow at 8am. I need to X, Y, Z. And she just does in a, little British accent. I don't know why I said her like that, but my Siri's got a British accent. Anyway, I almost thought maybe I just ought to introduce you to my Siri, but I'm not going to be that corny. So then in the mornings, when I get up right out of bed, I do my quick thing. I get ready. I go to the gym. I get back, heading back from the gym on my way to the gym. I listen to an audio book on the way back. I listen to an audio book. So I get a little bit of education in there. I think about, okay, is this something that I can apply or is this something I can educate? So apply and educate apply means can I use it in my world? Educate means can I share it with somebody else? And then I get home. I spend a little time with my family, just a little bit. And then I hop in the shower, do my thing, grab breakfast, do that thing, get ready, head out, go crush my day. But when I'm in the shower, 
And you guys are thinking, oh man, Michael, we are like, we listen to your podcast, but we do not want to know what you do in the shower. I don't blame you. But um, in this instance, I'm only going to talk to you about what I'm thinking about. So when I'm in the shower, I think about the same thing. Ooh, what was good about yesterday? Now that's a, that's a key question. I want to talk about that just for a second. Why? I already gave myself a pat on the back. But what was good about yesterday? When you think about your successes from the day before, it tees up a positive mentality for the rest of your day. Instead of going into your day thinking, oh man, I've got all this stuff I've got to do. Oh, you think, yeah, yesterday I kicked yesterday right in the ass. Like it was awesome. I got this done. I got that done. I got this done. Boom, 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 boom. Win, 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 win. And now I'm excited. I'm not dreading moving into my day. I set myself in a position of appreciation and you cannot be depressed and appreciative at the same time. Like they're, they're polar emotions. It's like, it's like, okay, if, if the stove is hot, it's hot. It can't be hot and cold. Otherwise it's just warm. And so it has no effect. And that's exactly where you have to get. You have to get your mind hot and on fire for the day. Yes. It's awesome. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to just smoke it. And then I think, so what do I need to do today? And what's crazy is after a while you stop thinking, what do I need to do today? And you begin to think about what do I get to do today? What's the thing today that I get to go bang out and, and like crush? And, and how does this work into my weekly goals? And how does that work into my quarterly goals? Oh, I'm so excited. This is a big pillar day. I can't wait tonight till tonight where I can be like, boom, nailed today. That was awesome. But this is what I do every single day. I come into the office, Phil's sitting behind his computer. I roll in at like, sometimes uh, it's, it's, sometimes it's even like 10 o'clock. I roll in and Phil's at his computer and I'm like, Phil, how do you feel? What's up? What's the deal? And he's like, come on, Mike, man, what kind of coffee are you drinking? What are you smoking? Like, what are you smoking and drinking? Like, I, can you just calm the F down so I can stay focused and do my job? Yeah, no, probably not because I'm jacked. I know what's going to happen today and it doesn't matter what bullets hit me. I'm still going to get my stuff done and it's going to be legend wait for it dairy little barney stinson for you if you don't know who that is um how i uh is it is it uh how i met your mother how i met your mother anyway um my point is is like that's but that excitement that i just lost myself in lost my train of thought in that's the same excitement that i get out of the shower with like <laughs> again um without lots of times my wife's like, look, I don't know. I don't see you take your coffee into the shower. I don't know what you're up to, but can you just like, like you're so happy. And I am, I'm excited. I'm appreciative. Like I woke up another day. God gave me another day on this earth. I get to live. I get to crush it. I have this opportunity to create impact and change. And, and, and this is what I do. So anyway, I went down a, like a weird long rabbit hole. Phil tells me I, I do this and I just caught myself. What does this have to do with how long does it take to make a bed? <laughs> Maybe I just ought to change the podcast, but I'm not going to. Phil, it's just going to be a weird one. So I'll get back on task here. My point is this. I do that so I strategically plan my day. And whenever I roll out of the shower, I'm excited. I'm ready to crush it. I get dressed as quick as I can. I can't wait to get out the door. I can't wait to go do my thing and win in the, in, in the course of my day. I get in the car and every second counts. So I'm part of a mastermind group where I get on a thread with a bunch of really badass entrepreneurs and we talk every single day. I hear what they say. Literally, earmuffs, if you're sensitive, the name of the group is called Badass Motherfuckers. Like that's what we call ourselves because we believe we like, that's what we believe we are in the game of business. We hold ourselves to that standard and I get in the car and we, and we start chatting and we're talking and we're talking about all sorts of different things from our business, to our staff, to our human resources, to our family, to our money, to our scale, to our ideas, to our dreams, to our frustrations, to our ups and our downs. But I have these guys, these guys that are the average of the people who I am in this world that I intentionally surround myself with so I can operate inside of a place of power. 
and I roll into my dealership. So imagine that, right? Like every second's counted so far. I woke up, I got ready, went to the gym, I got home, I ate what I was supposed to eat. Then I went in, I got ready, I'm planning my day while I'm getting myself ready to be presentable in my day. I walk out, I go out, I get in my car, I turn on this thread, I start to listen, I start to drop. I'm I'm listening and I'm teaching. I, I, I drop content on what I listen to it on my way back and forth to the gym that morning. If it, you know, and, and then I go into my office and I, and I crush that list. And then by like 11 or 12 o'clock, people are like, does Michael even do anything? Because I'm already done. I get in, I do my thing. It's over. But I haven't always been that way. So let me give you a different idea of what a day could look like. Okay. So it's 1130 at night. I'm sitting in front of the TV I've had a couple beers. I have this idea that I want to be healthy and I want to go to the gym. But I think I'm going to have one more beer and I'm watching an episode of How I Met Your Mother. I don't know if they'll sponsor this. I don't know if I'll get cut off for even saying it. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. Sitting on the couch. It's 1130 at night. I'm thinking you need to go to bed because you want to go to the gym in the morning. Oh, I will. I'll do it. I'm just going to have one more beer. I had a rough day today. Man. I go over. I grab that third beer. I'm drinking it. I'm watching TV. I fall asleep on the couch. At about one or two in the morning, I'm uncomfortable. I haven't slept good up to this point. I've got a crink in my neck now because the edge of the couch just didn't feel very good. And so I get up, I make my way to the bedroom where my wife went to sleep in a bed alone. I crawl into bed next to her. She, of course, doesn't tell me she loves me as I fall asleep. I don't get a chance to tell her, hey, I love and appreciate, honor, and cherish you as she's falling asleep. That's not the last thought on her mind. The last thought on her mind was, he's just out there on the couch. I set my alarm for 5.30 because I still have this great idea that I want to go to the gym. So I do that. I don't have any thoughts about the successes of my day yesterday or what I'm going to accomplish tomorrow because I'm in a cloudy, sleepy, maybe slightly intoxicated haze. I'm cognizant enough to make it to bed and maybe pee on the way. Like, that's it. I hit the bed. I fall asleep. The next morning, my wife gets up before me because I sleep through my alarm. I, re I, I vaguely remember shutting it off thinking it's time to get up and that's the last thought that I had. As I lay there, slightly feeling guilty that I slept through my alarm, I really give myself an opportunity to beat myself up emotionally because I didn't go work out. My wife beat me up. I get up. I move around. But I'm, now I'm in no hurry because I can still make the rest of my schedule, right? So I get up out of bed. I go into the bathroom. I brush my teeth. I think about absolutely nothing important. My thoughts are not intentional. I grab my cell phone and head, head into the bathroom to turn it sideways and play a game while I do my number two in the a.m. <laughs> do my no Phil, can we, can we cut that part and, put, and create like a really good content piece called um, Don't Do Your Poo? Be intentional. <laughs> like watch Instagram, that's going to come. But here's my thing. So I sit in the bathroom and instead of doing a, a two minute number two poo, I sit in the bathroom and I'm in there for five, 10, 15 minutes playing this game. One more level, one more level, one more level. Then I get out of the bathroom. I go, jump in the shower. I take a, you know, a slow, unintentional shower. I do my thing. I'm still droggy from the night before because I didn't get a very good night's sleep and my neck kind of hurts. And so I'm distracted by that. My wife comes in the bathroom. Of course, she rightfully so at this point should be a little irritated with me because I didn't go to bed when she did the night before. I didn't say the loving kind words that I should have right before we went to sleep. I didn't do the necessary work that a queen deserves inside of a kingdom, regardless of the size of your kingdom. Now I'm rushing around to get to work because somehow I went from being way ahead because I didn't go to the gym to now I'm all of a sudden behind and I put this weird pressure on myself. Well, I didn't get that done. I didn't get that done. And so now I'm going to go um, jump in the car. So I grab a, a makeshift breakfast. I make it out the door and I'm, I'm in the car. I'm, I'm on my way to the office because I didn't plan my day. Now I'm 
frantically thinking about what all I have to get done. What do the kids need? What about this? And what about that? I don't write any of it down and it's, I, I have good intentions and I'll probably remember a lot of it, but there's absolutely no way that I can execute on everything. My wife calls me because I didn't give enough time with her this morning that she can run through the things that she needed to talk to me about. She mentions to me that my daughter is really stressed, that she has this thing going on at school, but I didn't get to hear about it. And she really had wished that I would have because if I could have spoken to this situation, she felt like I would have made it better. But you see, the night before, I was disconnected from intention, and I just floated through my night into my next day. And now here it is, 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the day, and I haven't accomplished shit except for maybe making it to work on time. Now, I want you to take those two stories, and I want you to tell me the one common denominator between both of them. Because now we're going to talk about making a bed. The one common denominator about both of them is time. Both of those people had the exact same amount of time. One of them knew the, his limits and one of them knew that the way that I operate, the way I operate today, I know who I am and who I need to be. I know where I'm going and what I'm creating and what I'm building. I understand the vision. I have a dream board. I know what's on it. I know what I need to do to create inside of that. I know what signal I need to send into the world. My mind is bulletproof. I'm ready to go. I'm intentional and on point about every decision I make. Nothing's left to chance. So whenever I get out of bed the next morning, I'm on fire. And a good friend of mine, his name's Bernie, one of the guys on the thread that I mentioned to you. Bernie, a few years ago, turned me on to something. And it's, it's something that I think that regardless of which per person you are, this is a great jumping off point for you. Because no matter how efficient you think you are, I promise you're not efficient enough. There are a lot of apps on our phones that are called time audit apps. What these apps do is they measure how long every single thing you do takes. And it takes you about one week to get a really good litmus of, of what you actually do. It takes you a couple days of using the app before you don't feel like you're spending your entire day on this dumb app. But for 99% of the population, if you just replace that with nonsensical social media time, it's an exact trade-off. And at the end of it, so much value. So what the hell does any of this have to do with making a bed? Well, I'll tell you, my good friend Bernie, always, always, always talking about time, 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 time. And Bernie's theory behind time is he's a, he's a big business, right? He's a smart dude. He, he builds and grows cool shit. Bernie's theory behind time is simple. And it's this. I wake up every single day and try to figure out how I don't have to do shit my entire day. I delegate as absolute much of the things on my list as I possibly can to other people to get them to do them. And then I fill it with more productive stuff. So I essentially double my productivity in time. He does a new time audit on himself. Either I don't remember if it's every quarter or every, every six months, but regularly this guy time audits himself. And he said, but damn it, I'm frustrated about something. And so in this pod, we're all talking. He said, I'm frustrated because I recognize that inside of the, the conversation of love, love languages, mine, his, are gifts and touch. Like I, He's like, I like cool stuff. I didn't have much when I was growing up. I like that. And touch. I like it when my wife gives me a hug, gives me a kiss, tells me she loves me. Like I, I like that. <clears throat> hers, and, and so I'm almost identical to Bernie inside of that, but hers is almost identical to my wife, which is acts of service. And, Ernie, and, and so Bernie said to me, he said, I mean, maybe he's just said Ernie, but Bernie, Bernie said to me, hey, so here's the thing. I made a decision to insert something into my day every single day. When my wife gets out of bed, I, I go in and I make the bed. He said, it takes me exactly one minute and 45 seconds to make the bed. I'm like, holy shit, this man takes time audits seriously. And he's like, you know what pisses me off more than that? He's like, I can't delegate this because then I'm not doing an act of service, which is what she appreciates. So this is something I have to do. And I'm like, I, I love her and I want to do this for her, but I'm so frustrated that I can't delegate this to somebody else. 
And we're like, dude, it's a minute and 45 seconds. Chill the fuck out. And he's like, you want to know why I'm frustrated? He said, I'm frustrated because people don't understand the compounding nature of time. If I make my bed every single day for an entire year, I invest four hours into my wife. And I love her. And But this isn't something that she's ever going to be like, oh, Bernie was so good to me. He provided such a great life and he made the bed every single day. He might, she might mention, but she won't recognize that after a decade, I gave her an entire 40-hour work week to make sure that the bed was made. Think about that. In a standard lifetime, three weeks of your life is spent making the bed if you're the one that chooses to do that. Like in a working lifetime, 30, 30 years, three weeks of your lifetime is, is making the bed. How many working lifetimes do you spend on the toilet? Do you spend on your favorite app? You think five more minutes in bed. What does five more minutes equal a year? Well, I'll tell you. It's 1,500 minutes. It's almost 1,800 minutes. Makes the math a little bit easier. And it's 30 hours. It's a lot. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Like, think about that. These little moments in your life, you get to decide if they're intentional or if they're not. You get to decide every single minute. And so whenever somebody says to me, I don't have enough time, a lot of times I make like terrible, I have terrible thoughts when people say that to me. Oh, I hate that. But the reason that I do is because I know it's absolute bullshit. And most people aren't close enough to me that I feel like I can say that to them. I can't tell them, hey, my buddy Bernie spends four hours a year making a bed. Like he cuts things out of his life because they take years, not minutes. The decisions you make daily create hours, which create days weeks, months of your life that you tell me, I don't have enough time. And I say to you, you don't prioritize your time correctly. So my challenge to you in this podcast, is that I know I've been all over the map. So I talk about how great my mornings are. Um, and then I follow that up with, by the way, you're shitty at, at uh, protecting your time. But that's literally the way that you need to think about this. My challenge to you is to protect your time. But before you can begin the process of protecting your time, you need to begin the process of figuring out what your time is spent doing to begin with. Do a time audit. Look at where you spend your time. Go back and look at the times in your life when you were the most successful. And a scary comment here that's going to make a lot of you mad is that for a lot of you, that was high school. High school because every single day you got up and you had to be at school at a certain time and your classes were built on top of each other and you didn't have a choice. Bell to bell to bell, you had to go where you had to go. It's why it works. It's why the military works. It's why all of these organizations who have like these hard lines, time, 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 time. Where do you think that comes from? Because somebody way the hell smarter than me figured out a long time ago that if I can control you inside of the decisions of your time, I can move you down a path that you won't move yourself when you're free to make those decisions on your own. And ultimately, that's what I'm trying to get you to do. So it doesn't have to be how long does it take you to make a bed. The conversation doesn't have to be about, hey, you ought to tell your wife something positive right before she falls asleep. And it's really healthy for a relationship to go to sleep at the same time. The relationship isn't, hey, you should give yourself a pat on the back and and for what you accomplished that day and think about what you're going to do tomorrow. The conversation isn't even about making yourself want to high five yourself in the shower, which I've literally done. Like sometimes you just need a high five. The conversation is about evaluating your time and making a conscious decision. Am I using my time am i dragging time as a tool that i leverage or is time dragging me
and then just commit to change. Begin the process of protecting your time and your productivity and your income and your relationships and everything else that you focus on and that you want for your life will become more and more and more obtainable because you'll become a ninja at slicing through the things that are trying to rob you of your most precious gift, your time. Savvy.